The Mayor of Seal by Iowa Forever. Chapter 6 The biggest complaint for those visiting Seattle, aside from the numerous weird ponies that flocked to the city, was that due to the numerous national parks that surrounded it, and its proximity to Equestria's northern border, it rained. A lot. Sometimes for weeks on end. The locals were used to it, which is why other ponies in Equestria thought they were crazy. Raymond asked set down from the shelter onto the train station and into the rain. She was no stranger to being rained on, being a weather pony at all, but it was a change from the idyllic setting of Ponyville. She sighed and started walking, pausing only to make sure she was headed in the right direction. The crystal her mother had given her was tucked away in a small pack, hidden behind some crampy supplies. During the train ride to Seattle, Rainbow had pulled it out every now and then, and had to figure out exactly what it was. But other than glowing and occasionally spinning, it did nothing. Being a mare of action, this frustrated Rainbow Dash to no end. She began to feel like the crystal was silently mocking her. When she looked back to check on her pack, she thought she could see the green glow of the crystal through the fabric. As if the crystal was reacting to the attention she gave it. By now, a wind had come in from the east, making the rain harder to transverse. Rainbow took out her mane and continued walking and she used her right wing to seal herself from the worst of the rain. She would have flown, using her newfound strength to combat the wind. The pig side never flew well in the rain. Special powers or not. When I get inside, I'll need to do an overhaul on my feathers before they start to smell. Sweet Celestia, I'm starting to sound like Rarity. Rainbow Dash shook the thought. She liked Rarity, but the unicorn's obsession with appearance and style got annoying after a while. She checked her bearings again and continued walking. After a few minutes, she came to a row of houses, not like those in Ponyville, save the roofing was slate and not thatch. Most of the houses were dark, but one or two still had lights on, allowing Rainbow Dash more visibility. Night visit, it seemed, was not something Cartonians had. She kept walking until she saw her destination, a house near the end of the block with a large sign hanging over the door. When she reached the house, Rainbow Dash took as much wire off as possible and knocked. There was the sound of shuffling behind the door, before Pegasus Mare opened the door. She blinked a few times, as if she was still in Dusty's little light. Oh, hello there. Oh, may I help you? Yeah, I was wondering if I could stay here for a few days. Oh, of course. Please come in. Rainbow nodded her tanks and stepped inside, setting her wet saddlebags down. The other mare had disappeared, only to reappear with a book and pen bounced on her back. I must say, I wasn't really expecting any pony this time of year. Must just wait until the rain goes away. Really? Do the weather teams not schedule sunny days or something? They do, but some boys like to play in the rain more often than not. The mayor chuckled. <laughs> oh, there are my manners. I'm Honeydew, and I want to welcome you to Seattle Heights Bed and Breakfast, Rainbow Dash fans. Oh, you visited it before. Once, when I was really little. I'm not sure if you can remember me. Oh, I'm very good at remembering ponies. Honeydew took a moment to size up Rainbow Dash. Oh, yes. You were with that couple that was working with the Wonderbolts, right? Yeah, that was them, the other mare beamed. My mother was so worried she messed something up. Well, I love to keep chatting about the past, but you'll probably be for the jeep. Yeah, and other things. Well, she doesn't need to know about that. I do not, and grabbed the book and pen from her back. Now, I usually toss ten bits a night, but since you are a repeat customer, I'm needing to toss eight. Breakfast is at 8 every morning, and if you have any questions, just ask either me, my husband, or Honeysuckle. Who's Honeysuckle? My daughter. Rainbow Dash blinked before taking the pen and signing her name in the book. Satisfied, Honeydew walked over to the nearby cabinet and produced a small room key. You'll be staying in the second room to your left, up the stairs. We mostly use it for stores nowadays, but I can move things out if you like. Nah, yeah, I think I'll be fine. Just holler if you need anything. Rainbow nodded and made her way up the stairs. The stairs squeaked with each step, and the water on her hose soaked the rug. But, after being stuck on a train for several hours, the sensation was welcomed by Rainbow. The room itself was small, only about half the size of Flutter Size Cottage, and smelled of pine. There was a bed set against the father's wall, right beneath the window, and next to that sat a small nightstand on with a clock. A few boxes were tucked away in one corner. Rainbow Dash saw that they were filled with books. Toys and small magazines. Mabel set her saddlebags against the nearest box and walked over to the bed. Ah, oh, nice naps to be good.
There were two ponies, a mare and a stallion. They stood at a distance, staring at Rainbow Dash. Confused and a bit scared, Rainbow stared back at them, trying to get a response. Um, hi, she said, no response. So, are you going to keep staring at me like that? Because it's starting to get creepy. Seriously, can you guys even talk? The other ponies did not respond. Rainbow Dash tried to get closer, but every time she did, the others would move away from her. Trying to move farther away had the same result, with the ponies merely directing after her. Stop following me around like that! Rainbow Dash said, Did I do something wrong? The ponies did not respond to her. The stallion merely looking at the mare. She was ready. He said, Ready for what? Wait, what does this have to do with me being an alien? The, the, I'm not going to go crazy, right? The ponies looked back at her as he began to rise up into the air, followed by some unseen force. Flapping her wings to counteract the rising had no effect, and Rainbow Dash saw that she was now the size of a small filly. Seeing that her wings were effectively useless, she tried flailing her legs in an attempt to break free of whatever was pulling her up, only this made her ascend faster. She flew higher, the other two ponies faded out of sight, replaced by a column of rocket fire. Rainbow Dash woke to the sound of knocking. A quick glance at her clock showed that an hour and a half had passed since he had fallen asleep. And she guessed it was probably behind you, coming to make sure Rainbow was okay. She puts the thoughts on a racing dream out of her head, rolled out of bed and crossed to the open door. Honeydew was not out of the door. Instead, Rainbow nearly tripped over a filly about the same age as Kulu. Oh! You must be Honeysuckle! Yes, the filly said. I need something here. Oh, sure, take whatever you need. The filly nodded brushed past Rainbow Dash. So, what's it like living here? It's nice. The filly reads one of the boxes begin nosing through it. Is there anything cool around here? Not really. Then what do you do? Nothing much. So, do you just sit around in your room and do nothing all day? Yes, except when I have school. What's that like? Nice. The filly grabbed one of the magazines and exited her room. Are you trying to avoid talking with me? Yes. And with that, the filly laughed. He was behind a confused and slightly angry Rainbow Dash. The side that complaining about was probably not in her best interest. So he went back into the guest room and closed the door. Okay. That was weird. Guess she's gonna like Twilight. She sat down with her back propped up against the door, and looked at the box. Still, even Twilight wouldn't be that focused on a book. She stood up and walked over to the box, pushing her saddlebags aside for a moment. She selected one of the magazines and pulled it out of the box, dropping it on the ground when she was sure she had enough room. Calling in the magazine was probably excessive. It was small, had more bright colors, and was printed on cheap paper. The cover showed some a picture of a bay stallion, dressed in a light blue suit, punting a gray pony with an ugly haircut, and funny mustache underneath the mare. Captain Equestria. This may be one of those comic books Spike told me about. Rainbow flipped the comic over. Well, it looks cool. Kind of crummy, though. So he flipped over the pit once more and began looking through the pages. Yeah. Yes, I have some time to kill. Miss Dash! Miss Dash! <sighs> no, Captain. We gotta stop Red Skull. Rainbow rolled over, dragging a nearby blanket with her. Miss Dash! Rainbow felt somebody poking on her back, right beneath the wings. She flared her briefly and rolled over, coming to face to face with two very large green eyes. Yeah! Rainbow reeled back, tickling her four legs in the bag, startling Huggle Sickle. Why did you do that? Sorry, didn't know you roll over like that. Philly said, looking towards the floor. Hey, don't stand so close to me. A name was a rainbow, accidentally smacking the Philly through a wall, directed into her mind. But she quickly shifted her attention and proceeded to untangle herself from her sheets. Where's your mom? She's doing something with Dad downtown. They said I should be able to help you if you need anything. Oh, so either ignore me, or whatever freaking alien powers I will have will come out and I'll kill somebody. This is to be fun. So, uh, is there anything you want? No, I already wait. I came to wake you up and tell you you're watching me. Couldn't you wait until I've woken up? I was going to. I ain't never really woken somebody up before. <sighs> you sound like my one of my friends. She makes everything from spells to gain drugs sell like some kind of school assignment. I don't know anything about that. Getting drunk, that is. Good. Rainbow Dash fans are tangling herself coming out of her bed. So, you sure you don't need me to do anything? Not yet. 
Honeysuckle turned and left. Rainbow Dash exited the room and headed downstairs. The carpet was still a bit wet from sewers he had walked the night before. And when she had reached the bottom floor, she glanced around and was able to spot a small pot of something sitting on a stovetop. It took Rainbow a minute to realize she was looking through the wall before everything returned to normal. I gotta find a way to turn that off. Rainbow says she went towards the kitchen. Well, there's always poker night with Applejack. That should be fun. <laughs> Rainbow chuckled and continued on. Upon entering the kitchen, she looked and spied the pot once more. An idea came to mind. Planting her hose, she looked at the pot, trying to call up her special vision to see if she had exactly been prepared. What happened next was something no pony could have expected. As she started focusing, two red beans shot from her eyes and struck the pot in the center. Unable to understand the amount of air she being poured into it, the pot exploded, scaring bits of food and shrapnel across the room. Rainbow Dash yelped in surprise and ducked, small metal pieces of metal bouncing off of her with little lasting effect. When she was sure it was over, she stood back up and surveyed the room, knowing the number of gouges in the wall caused by wayward straws. I really need to find a way to turn that off! There was a sound of hose coming down the stairs before a honeysuckle burst through the kitchen. A small fire extinguisher bounced on her back. What happened? She asked. I, uh, accidentally flew up a pot. The village placed the fire extinguisher on the ground and let down Rainbow Dash. How did you do that? Laser vision? Honeysuckle Molly raised an eyebrow. I'm not really sure what happened. I was just looking at the pot and it exploded. There was a long pause before Honeysuckle picked up her fire extinguisher and made to leave. You're weird. I like that. She so smiled and tried it out of the room. Rainbow Dash smiled slightly and turned her attention back to the mess in front of her. All in all, it was a rough start for a pony trying to clear her mind. Another day passed, and it had to be useful and to make up for destroying part of the kitchen. Rainbow Dash had taken up a few smaller chores around the house. Most could be done without Rainbow overexerting herself and breaking something. For that, she was grateful. However, after the incident of the other day, Honeysuckle had taken great interest in Rainbow Dash. While Rainbow was taller and foals following her around, the little filly was almost as persistent as Scootaloo. While well, she was not peeking around corners or hiding in her room, she was always standing next to the older mare as she went about different tasks. My mom said you liked flying, Honeysuckle said. Why aren't you flying? I love to, but there's no room. Rainbow Dash flapped her wings for emphasis. I knocked something over if I was too careless. Wait until the weather clears in. I'll show you some of my moves. Moves? Like stuff flying? Yes, yeah, something like that. You ever see any stuff flying? Not really. I even thought about a lot about flying since my wings aren't strong enough. Hey, maybe I can give you some pointers. My mom's a flight trainer, so I picked up a few things from her. Such as? Well, that was five. She took me out to a lake with a small cliff to teach me how to fly. See, proceed to follow me off the cliff until my wings got strong enough for hovering. Isn't that a little dangerous? It's better to the alternative. I've heard of foals being pushed up clouds to you. Besides, it wasn't that big of a cliff. And she was waiting to catch me if anything went wrong. You're not going to do anything like that, are you? Of course not. I'd probably get a lot of ponies angry if I started flowing foals off cliffs. I could probably show you a few exercises to get started. Okay. There's a pause before Rainbow Death spoke again. So, I noticed that you read comics. Honeysuckle frowned and looked away. You think that's weird? No, of course not. I'm not one of those prissy Carolot ponies who thinks everything every pony does is weird. Besides, it's kind of like me in the Dairy Do series. Ever read any of those? No. Oh, well, you should. I think you liked them. Doesn't matter now. I just wanted to know why you'd read them. I never paused, isolated only by Honeysuckle shuffling. Well... When I was really little, some mean ponies came in and hurt my dad. I mean, really hurt them. He couldn't fly for days. Mom cried a lot, and I didn't really know what was wrong. So I got sad and cried too. The guards tried to be helpful, but nothing really happened. But there was a superhero that no pony would have gotten hurt. Every pony would have been fine. So, it makes you feel better. That there's still some ponies who won't let the bad guys get away. You remind me of them, somehow. Me? I'm not much of a hero. Why? To be honest, I'm not the nicest of ponies. I play pranks, I show off, and my friends say I talk about myself too much. Maybe that's why you could be a hero. 
If you need things to work things things out. Yeah, maybe. There's still more silence. Ma's still wondering how that pot exploded. <laughs> maybe when the weather clears, I'll tell you what happened. He said something about laser fissing. That's not possible, is it? I'm not an A-cat, so I couldn't tell you if ponies could have laser vision. It'd be pretty cool they did. <laughs> First, I wouldn't have any trouble with her animals if she had laser vision. Maybe Angel would be nice to her for once. Who's Fluttershy? One of my friends from Ponyville. I suppose I should tell you a little more about that Sunday. I like that. Icicle smiled and wandered off. The rain stopped the next day. Even as he had learned to just bear with it, Rainbow Dazzle was glad to see the sun again. She stepped outside and took a deep breath. There was enough moisture in the air to give it a sweet smell. Rainbow Dazzle felt a shiver down, down the length of her spine as he inhaled. As soon as the weather was clear enough for flying, she spread her wings and prepared to take off. At least, she would have, had there not been an extra weight tugging at her tail. Miss Daz? Rainbow turned and saw Honeysuckle standing behind her. You can just call me Rainbow Dash. Call me Miss, and I'll start acting like my mom. Where are you going? I was just going to fly around for a little. Maybe do some sightseeing. Want to come with me? I can't fly, remember? Well, no, you can't. But I can. She turned, grabbed Honeysuckle by the scruff of her neck, and placed her on her back. Wait, are you sure this is safe? Relax. I've done this a million times. Just hang on tight. Rainbow felt the Philly's hose wrapped around her neck just before she took off. Before the incident with the rock, flying sessions usually got out to a slow start. But with her new powers, taking off was no problem at all. If anything, her greatest problem was keeping a reasonable speed. So, Rainbow asked once he leveled off, enjoying the view? Yes! The filly said, never done anything like this before. Ask your parents about it sometime. I'm sure they'd love to take you out flying like this. Well, ask your dad. I don't think your mom is in any condition to fly right now. Why? Is she sick? Wouldn't you like to know? He circled around and began to head down south. As he did, Rainbow Dash spotted a group of ponies gathered around a cart in a large green area. Wonder what's going on down there? Ponies don't really get into groups around here, Honeysuckle said. Well, I always liked a good crowd. Rainbow Dash changed the race again and climbed down the rear of the group. She so landed and allowed Honeysuckle to climb off her back before proceeding. Hey, what's up? Not sure, one of the nearby ponies said. Some mare came in after the storm, since she was some kind of powerful wizard, and wanted to show off her powers. Powerful wizard? Wait, what does she look like? Just wait. I think it's starting. Rainbow Dash went towards the cart, where a small stage had been set off. There was a puff of smoke, and a blue mare with white and blue mane and a wizard costume stepped out. Guess who? Woohoo! <laughs> Trixie! Rainbow Dash said, her skate skipping to a scowl. You know her? The other pony asked. Yeah. She showed up in the town I lived in and started bragging about defeating an Ursa Major. A couple of cults believed her and woke up an Ursa for her to defeat. One destroyed the whole town my friend had driven it away. She's not going to do anything like that, will she? I hope not. Just don't try to prove her wrong. I'm going to get out of here before she... Rainbow Dash looked down and saw Honeysuckle was missing. Great, she ran off. You really should keep an eye on your daughter when you go out in public. My what? She's not my daughter, sister. No. Rainbow Dash scanned the group before attempting to view her new vision. She saw nothing at first, but after a second sweep, she spotted the filly, suffering her way towards the front. Frowning, Rainbow Dash began to follow her, trying her best not to shove the other ponies in her path. She was so focused on finding the filly, she was not paying attention to what Trixie was saying. Citizens of Seattle, gaze upon the force of magical might that is the great and powerful Trixie! I have traversed the many of the world many times over. I have studied many spells and magical arts that most ponies won't dare to attempt. Now, what as the great and powerful Trixie dazzles you with her immense power? There was a flash of pyrotechnics as Trixie reared up on her hind legs. Rainbow Dash ignored this and continued towards Honeysuckle. Why did you run away with me? She asked in a whisper around the filly. I can't see the stage, she replied. Well, yeah, you don't know the kinds of ponies do hang around these type of places. Do those kind of ponies want magic cells? I, well, I don't know. 
Maybe that's turned her attention back to the stage, where Trixie was busy setting up her next act. And, stroking her ego, Rainbow Dance was not really listening to what she was saying, until some point asked exactly what Trixie had done to qualify her as great and powerful. Trixie is glad you asked. When she was starting her journey of discovery, Trixie stumbled across a village being menaced by an Ursa Major. A quick spell created an illusion of a massive blue bear made of stars and magic. Drawing from my massive power, I, the great and powerful Trixie, vanquished the Ursa and allowed the town to rest in peace for... That's not an Ursa Major. Trixie visibly panicked as Honeysuckle stepped forward. What? Who dares to challenge the integrity of the great and powerful Trixie? Um, me? Trixie glared at the filly. And what do you know about her says? Have you ever seen one? Um, no, but Red Skull hit the tice to want to attack me in hand in a comic I read. It looked exactly like that one, and he said it was an Ursa Minor. You mean... Trixie prevailed the sword. <laughs> you mean you base your accusations off of... Comics? Um, yes. Well, how do you know what they say is true? After all, they're just fantastic stories that have no chance of actually happening. Who are you going to trust? A mayor who has spent more time out in the world than you ever will? Or some poorly colored pieces of paper? Really bad to hung her head, pawing nervously at the ground as she did so. They're not poorly colored. Keep telling yourself that. Maybe you'll convince yourself it's true. Tracy turned back and was about to continue her act when a second point stepped forward. You know she's right, Trixie, Raymond Dash said, glaring at the show mare. And I've actually seen an Ursa, so I know the truth. You! Trixie merely returned to glare. Have you come to attempt some pitiful show of force to prove yourself to the great and powerful? Don't give me that! You couldn't even scare yourself away. You only made it angry. What kind of power is that? Oh, and where were you during that incident? I didn't see you trying to stop the thing from destroying your town! At least some points, I know not to go attacking giant rampacing animals. Looking towards this one time with the dragon. But that doesn't matter! Bah! I know the real reason. You just stood aside and let that little witch of a friend humiliate me in front of all those ponies! Twilight's not a witch. Sharing your nap exists. Rainbow Dash approached the stage. It's your own fault that you got humiliated. If you hadn't been bragging every second you were Ponyville, those cults wouldn't have led the Ursa to you. You are calling me a braggart! Oh, what about you? You constantly spoke of yourself as the greatest pony to come out of Cloudsdale, and I have it on good account that you are a massive glory hound. If I actually considered myself a braggart, I would say you are no different from than Trixie. You want to know what's really different about us, Trixie? Rainbow Dash slipped up and laid in front of Trixie. I've learned to back down when I've gone too far, and I know when I'm starting to hurt ponies. You, on the other hoof, you just keep bragging and insulting and humiliating ponies until every pony is against you. You don't seem to have a real problem with this. I am nothing like you, and I will never be anything like you. Trixie stared at Rainbow Dash, unsure what to do now. At her pause, she chuckled and regained her composure. So, and now what? If you think you are somehow superior to me, do you hope to prove that in the show of skill? Because I'm sure you will not pit yourself against my arcane powers. No. What? No, I don't think you're worth it. Rainbow Dash turned around. I'm going home. This, more than anything Rainbow Dash had said, Hit Trixie the hardest. Not worth it. Not worth it! Trixie said to her host, Trixie is the most powerful unicorn to have ever lived! And you say, I'm not worth it! Yeah, besides, I'd probably end up breaking you or something. Breaking me? How's this for breaking? Maybe that's turned to the sound of wood splintering and saw a large chunk of the stage flying towards her at high speed. She threw her right foreleg up in defense as the chunk of wood slammed against her. There was a second crack, and Rainbow Staff saw the stage chunk splinter into pieces, while her foreleg and head remained unharmed. She lowered her leg and saw Trixie staring at her in shock. What was that for? 
I... I... What? How did you... That's impossible! Well, I'm still standing and I'm not dead. I'd say it's possible. Jaxie could only stare and babble in incoherent senses. Finally, she recovered a glare at Rainbow. I... Just didn't use enough power then. Jaxie's horn began to glow and another section of the stage began to tear off. In desperation, Rainbow Dash reared up and slammed her hose against the stage. Shattering it and sending both mares tumbling to the dirt. Tracy, calm down before you kill somebody! You, a state's my show, the story of my state, and you want me to calm down? You're the one who threw the states at my head. Oh, I'll do more than that. Tracy lowered her head and her horn began to glow with magical energy. She would have cast her spell had not another mat aura massacre fell to two mares and yanked them off the ground. Sweet Celestia, you're both out of control. Acorn Stallion said, stepping out of the cor a crowd. I don't really care what you two have against each other, but stop fighting like a couple of angry foals, or we'll have to take more drastic measures. Emma Dash turned to the best of her abilities and looked at Tracy. I'm up for it, are you? Just put Tracy down. The aura sets, and the two mares dropped to the ground. So, you have turned yet another town against me. Hey, I thought he said... Silence! You may as jam on me now, but this will not be the end. This is not the last. You will see of the great and powerful Trixie! There was a puff of smoke, and Trixie was off, running towards the town as fast as her legs could carry. Still hasn't learned how to teleport. Rainbow Dash turned to the other ponies. You should all go home now. I'm sure the town guard will show up and take care of this mess. Also, the ponies nodded and began to wander off. While well, Sun decided to stick around and help with the cleanup effort, Rainbow Dash stepped back to allow the others room. A honeysuckle tried over to her. How did you do that? Do what? Smashing the stage like that? It was bad, but also kind of cool. I panic. I didn't mean to let loose like that. You. you've done something like this before? I made a tree explode by kicking it once. If that's what you want now. Well, is that why you're here? What? You never told me why he came here. Are you hiding from some point because he broke their tree? No, it's not like that. Come on, I'll show you. They were back in Rainbow Dash's room, with a crystal in front of them. I know I shouldn't get worked up over this. I feel like there's something with this crystal I need to find out. Everything I've done only made it glow. Have you tried talking to it? Rainbow Dash looked at the filly. It's a crystal. It's not going to do anything if I talk to it. How would you know? You haven't tried that yet. Yeah, because I don't talk to rocks. One of my friends might have she ever got lonely, but me, not so much. I so want to put a mod joke here. Maybe I should try. I need to pro so approach the rock, only to be blocked by a blue hoof. No, I don't want you to get hurt if anything goes wrong. I can take a lot of hits. You can't. I'll do it. Rainbow right Dash approached the crystal and laid in. It continued to glow. Brightness increasing as you got closer. Um, hey there, Rock. So, I think there's something important I need to find out. So, if there's anything you could be able to help me, that would be very much appreciated. The rock did nothing. It's glow, never dimming for a second. This is stupid. How's Pinky able to do something like this? Frustration, she swatted the rock with her hoof. And she saw it. She saw a field of white, snow flying out the sky. The ice beneath her hose was firm, but slippery. Ahead, she saw a green glow from beneath. The glow flickered for a moment before a massive spire broke from the ice. Rainbow Dash blinked as he was back in the room, Crystal sitting next to her. Hey, it worked! I know what I have to do! She grabbed the crystal and made for her cell bags. After rummaging around for a minute, she produced a sack of bags and tossed some honeysuckle. Here, give this to your mom when she comes home. You leaving? I have to. The crystal wants me to go somewhere. If I go find out anything, then that's where I have to go. Why? Because I'm really an alien, and that crystal is the only thing I have that can tell me where I'm from. There was a silence as Honeysuckle made sense of what Rainbow Dash said. You mean, all this time? You were spending time with an alien. Yeah, I know, that's kind of hard to believe, but it's the truth. The feeling blinked a few times before smiling. Well, I hope you find what you're looking for. Me too. Rainbow Dash strides onto her cell and exit the room. Your parents should be home in a minute. Tell them I'm really happy to let me stay here for a minute. Oh, and tell your mom she needs to go to a, see a doctor sometime soon. The two reached the front door, Rainbow Dash prying it open with her nose. 
Why, is she sick? No. She's having twins. With that, Rainbow Dash spread her wings and began to fly north. It was night, and Trixie found herself roaming the streets of Seattle. In her mind, she was scolding herself for destroying her wagon, as now she had little money and no real place to stay. Again. It's that stupid Pegasus is fucked. She growled. If she hadn't shown up, I could have actually made something with this to her. But no, she just had to go and ruin my life one city at a time. Well, I'll show her. I'll show her. That witch Twilight, Ponyville, Seattle. I'll show them all why no one shades the great and powerful Trixie! But do you have the means to do so? A voice said from the shadows. Trixie whirled around, trying to find the source of the voice. SHOW YOURSELF! Be warned, I am well versed in many combat spells. Don't panic. I'm not here to kill you. The voice said again. I just couldn't help but overhear that you've been wrong several times. Trixie realized her magic slumped to the curve. Yes, it's as if the universe is making Trixie suffer. I doubt it is geared specifically for that purpose, but then again, how do you plan to go about your revenge? I don't know. Sunday, I hope to have enough power that I can flatten flatten that miserable town of ease. Someday. <clears throat> Why not now? Trixie led to where the voice was coming from. You have a way. I have many ways, and I share your cause. Many years ago, I was wronged by ponies who did not share my ideals. Who wished to take credit only for themselves? I want to redeem myself and do away with that lot. But I need help. What's it for me? I know several powerful spells that will aid you greatly. No longer will you be able to be on your own. You will have servants. Ponies will do anything for you and even die for you. You will be able to slay the most powerful piece on the planet. You will challenge Princess Celestia and herself. You will teach Trixie these spells. Of course. You help me regain my honor. I help you get your revenge. What is your answer? Trixie thought for a moment before replying. Yes! I want this! Give Trixie the power to challenge the gods! Let my name be Feared and respected by every stallion, mare, and foal in Ecclesia. Let me squash that little witch and her posse. Give me this power. There was a pause before Tracy heard a chuckling. I admire your enthusiasm. I would do so. Just, I, I just ask for one thing. What? There was a sound of movement before a stallion stepped out of the shadows. Kneel. P.S. On a side note, I think my Zod impersonation is better than critics.